Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So um, I saw like a comment about Pentecost and it's like, of course, well, got to mention this. There's so many things, you know, there's so much going on at this point in time, so much being exposed. And we can only hope that humanity will grow and understand and really, truly open up its eyes as a whole to the bigger picture. And so this one particular tweet, uh, who is this? This is Suleiman Ahmed, and he's a journalist, geopolitics, has a master's philosophy, et cetera, et cetera. Unofficial Iranian media reports uh, that President Ibrahim Raisi at, and at least one other high-ranking Iranian government official died in the helicopter crash this afternoon in northern Iran. Iranian security officials are already talking about a serious assassination attempt, noting that there were three helicopters in the convoy and the other two arrived safely to their destination. Um, there's multiple tweets going on right now just saying what Iran would do uh, if it's found that Israel's behind this. And then, of course, there's those out there that, you know, one tweet was like, oh, all the conspiracy theorists are at it again saying it's Israel. It's like... Where's your head? It's it's so likely that it is uh, the system trying to provoke. Uh, it could be just an accident. Uh, it could be nothing happened, and maybe it's all just a big, you know, story for fabrication. Um, but at the same time, you know, they are trying like hell to manifest this WW3. That's pretty obvious. We've seen all sorts of talk of WW3 going back to Albert Pike in 1871. So, you know, again, uh, it can be frustrating for those of you, uh, like you guys that are listening, that are awake to listen to people that are sleepwalking still li through life thinking, you know, that people like Joe Biden actually make decisions. You know, I think that's a really, really, really good point to bring up is, um, yeah, I mean, all of this could be just for optics, but we know one thing is for sure is that they are pushing really hard to bring in that WW3 so that they can change our whole system and catch a lot of people off guard and, and take control over a lot of people through different hardships and through manipulation and, and through system changes. And best of all, for your protection. <laughs> that's, that's their favorite thing they like to do. So this is really, really interesting uh the day of, of pentecost it's been one that i've kind of been keeping my eyes on as far as the eclipse goes and uh 40 days after the eclipse and seeing pentecost and, and what is pentecost you know that was uh, uh judah went to the town of nineveh and he proclaimed that if you guys don't get your stuff together god is going to come in 40 days and and blow you all up and i've been watching because exactly 40 days later after the eclipse now we have pentecost now we do have some of this going on some some treachery on the outskirts of us not directly related to us but this is quite concerning and and not surprising no and it's it's very very foggy um it, from everything that they're showing um i'll jump over here and show you some of the stuff that's coming out as you can see um, in thick incredible fog uh, I saw a comment where somebody was saying reminds them of when Kobe Bryant's helicopter went down um, you know again there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes with people that really know very very dark things about the power structure uh, that become threatening if they ever think that you're about to leave you know there's a ritual they have in the masonic lodges where they blindfold you and put a sword to your chest and they say it's better that you should thrust yourself upon this than betray the brotherhood yeah you know again this is why there are so many people that disappear around certain families certain politicians so you know they're searching there's all these different uh things coming out unofficial sources saying that he is dead and you know there is um a more official uh sources saying that they are forming a temporary government so we'll have to watch you know again they are trying to trigger this and and 
at the same time, it seems like they're having a lot of trouble to actually trigger it, you know, because again, people are waking up. And if we get to the point where you actually, again, have people that have their fingers on triggers in the higher up places that hold back and, and say no to the system, then we could get some real, real change. Because, I mean, things do not absolutely have to happen. Things can be different. The only the only reason people are expecting WW3 is because it's it's written and it's scripted. So they, they want this to happen. But it, it we can break out of this. There is a way. Energy works. Energy makes a difference. Your intentions make a difference. And I don't want any one person to sit down and feel... My energy doesn't matter. Oh, yes, it does. It absolutely matters. So spreading that uh, that intention that everyone is safe and somehow, some way, we change the course of time and only those that are in power causing the trouble, maybe those could be the ones that finally get, get taken down. I mean, if we can imagine it, it can so yeah maybe I'm thinking really big but why not (laughs) we should think big we should think of ways to try to avoid this you know I'm not someone that can like march over there and stop anyone myself but boy I can sit here and meditate and do mantras and send my intentions and I know from working on enough people that my energy makes a difference it can make a change it can make a very very positive change so that's that's where we're all at right now I think and there was something else I was going to say but I I forgot I'm sure it'll come back well yeah I'm sure it will and then we'll share it again Um, just want to let you like realize what we are heading into as far as what it means again to go into a bronze age It means that we are heading into a more awakened state of mind in which we will realize things. It doesn't mean that we're heading into a golden age uh, because we're not going into an age where everything's going to be perfect and it's going to turn immediately into heaven on earth. Again, um, I think there's a lot of people that want it like to be and of course, it's natural to want it to be perfect tomorrow, to wake up and all of a sudden, hey, they've all been arrested. It's all great, guys. Now we could just relax. But no, it takes time. It takes time. It takes work. And we're the ones that have to do it. That's the thing. Nobody's going to do it for you. Think about the culture that they've they've fostered. They fostered a culture in which nobody does anything. They want to get you to feel that you don't got to do anything. Lay back. You, you know, just look at Christianity. Well, you know, again, it's Pentecost Sunday. What is Christianity's basic tenet? Uh, it's the blood of Jesus covers your sins. It's not that you have to really change, although they'll say, repent, repent, uh, you know, and believe in the blood of Christ. And, and by believing in the blood of Christ, you are believing in blood sacrifice, which allows the system to use you and your loved ones as blood sacrifice, because you're saying that you believe in it. If you're saying you believe in it, you're giving your credence to its validity, and thus you're condoning it. And by condoning it, they keep doing it. And this is how the system works. And some people just won't want to hear that, and they'll, you know, swear or do something or just unsubscribed. Well, you know, if if you want to stay in a dark age, go right ahead. It's up to you. But the fact is, it affects everybody else around you. And they can utilize people, as they have, to go ahead. I mean, how, how did they get through the Inquisition without a ton of people that believed what the church was saying? They needed those people to carry out their will because, you know, there was not enough of the control system to actually, you know, torture tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands or millions. No, no, they need they need people that don't look deeply, that simply believe without any evidence and just trust in the system. And then that makes those people very dangerous and they're utilized to attack others. And right now, I mean, it's just, again, they set Christianity Christianity on one train track and Islam on another, and they're pushing them off against each other so they can both mutually destroy each other. And both of them come out of the same tradition. 
So when Pentecost, the 50th day after Passover came, all the believers were together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a violently blowing wind came from the sky and filled the whole house where they were staying. Tongues that looked like fire appeared to them. The tongues arranged themselves so that one came to rest on each believer. All the believers were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as Spirit gave them the ability to speak. Devout Jewish men from every nation were living in Jerusalem. They gathered when they heard the wind. Each person was startled to recognize his own dialect when the disciples spoke. Stunned and amazed, the people in the crowd said, All these men who are speaking are Galileans. Why do we hear them speaking in our native dialects? We're Parthians, Medes, Elamites. We're from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the country near Cyrene in Libya. We're Jewish people, converts to Judaism, and visitors from Rome, Crete, and Arabia. We hear all these men in our own languages as they tell about the miracles that God has done. All these devout men were stunned and puzzled. They asked each other, what can this mean? Others said jokingly, they're drunk on sweet wine. And then Peter stood up with the 11 apostles in a loud voice. He said to them, men of Judea, everyone living in Jerusalem, you must understand this. So pay attention to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. Rather, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will speak what God has revealed. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit on my servants, on both men and women. They will speak what God has revealed. I will work miracles in the sky and give signs on the earth, blood, fire, and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will become red as blood. Uh, then, before the terrifying day of the Lord comes, then whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So, you know, again, this is about, well, when you look to the Old Testament, it's all fear-based. But yet, what are they talking about here? They're talking about the end of the Dark Age, really. They're talking about going into a Bronze Age when we have psychic abilities. This is really what they're alluding to, is that we are going to have psychic abilities that we don't have in a dark age when we're out of the dark age. The Holy Spirit descending, the dove descending, these representations, you know, the little lit fires in their heads instead of just nothing but darkness and, you know, too much fluoridated water. Again, there's a reason why the system does what it does. And, you know, one thing that people can't understand is there, there could be truth in there because there is truth that hooks you. There, there are things in there that are accurate to a degree, and then there's distortion. So people just automatically think, I have to believe the whole of it, even though it's been revised, edited, even though it came about when you look at these collection of different books. And again, there's more books that were not included in the Bible that were out there for the masses that people were quoting all the time than are in the Bible. 66 books in the Bible, by the way. Hello. You know, again, there's so much illusion and there's so much that we need to be using maybe a little more intuition with. When you look at this, what do you see? Well, th these kind of look like tongues of fire, don't they? Well, you know, they're, they're petals on a chakra. And people will say, oh, I don't believe in the chakra system. That's anti-Christian. That's, that's devil worship. No, you're actually believing in the devil's uh, theology because the, the satanic system is the one that's in darkness and leads to darkness. And, and that's the system that's dominant on the planet in a dark age. And that has been the Abrahamic tradition. King Solomon said, oh, well, Solomon, soul and moon, sun and moon, Ida and Pegala. These, these are the Ida and the Pegala. When their energies, the masculine and the feminine, are balanced uh, in a natural way, not in a distorted way, not chemically induced, not surgically induced. No, 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 no. That's the system distorting everything as the system knows only how to distort, twist and pervert that which is natural. When your energies are balanced in a natural way, and this is also the energies um, that are alluded to in a lot of the 
uh, speaking uh, that's attributed to Yeshua, like in the Beatitudes, there are things in the Beatitudes that will ring out and, and just resonate with everybody's soul. Well, you know, some of it, again, is actually what was said and taught. And he had a huge impact, a huge impact. What did the system do? They had to gain control of it because he was a starseed light worker. He was an ascended master that was coming in the darkest part of the Kali Yuga in order to start initiating at least some light out there because everybody was totally walking about in darkness. So he did teach things that would be uh, included in the Tao Te Ching, things that would be included in uh, the Bhagavad Gita. You know, I and the Father are one, but you know, all these miracles, why do you marvel? Because greater are you going to do? The system comes about, gets you to believe in blood sacrifice, which then they use against you by sending you off to endless wars, and gets you to actually, in some ways, if you are following the Catholic tradition of the Eucharist, be a C-A-N-I... You know, I think it's really, really important that we understand how our energy works, how our energy bodies work, the importance of balancing ourselves, the importance of healing ourselves, uh, the importance of healing over that trauma before we really bring in or try to do the energy work or, or use our gifts because it can throw us out of balance. When you activate yourself, it changes your whole body chemistry. You change. Some people change to a very high degree. Some people change to a very low degree, but there's still change going on. And if if all of your parts of you are not balanced completely, then that's really going to upset the boat. It's going to rock the boat and you could find yourself very sick. You know, it might show itself as migraines. It might show itself as diarrhea, constipation. It might show itself as depression. That's a big one. Depression's huge. It might show itself as moodiness. Um, but this is, we wouldn't have this if only we could start with our children and teach our children about our energy bodies and how important it is to uh, to keep them healthy and to keep ourselves healed. And if we're exposed to trauma, how important it is to walk through that and look through that. That's That's key. That's number one. But look at what this system has done. I mean, it's done nothing but throw people into trauma because it knows with our energies, if we're able to act as a whole and we are able to encompass with our energy an issue, we can shift and we can change it. And, and they don't want that. So they say that all of these things are evil and it's of the devil and, and you're really, really bad if you look into this. And that just really breaks my heart because what is bad and wrong about understanding our bodies? What is bad and wrong about understanding that the love and the attention that you give to your child actually can work as a healing mechanism? And if you hone that and strengthen it, well, it matters and it makes a difference. So, um, you know, there's a lot we have going on right now. People are waking up to a really high degree. And I remember what I was going to say that that guy, um, the one that with the assassination uh, attempt, uh, I I felt his when I looked to see what had happened. Yes, there was a, a, a crash. But the last thing that I feel from him is his throat chakra clenched. His solar plexus got really, really sick. And then all I see is darkness. It's almost as if somebody put a blanket over him and just completely hid him from view. Now, this could mean death, but it could also mean that the government is doing what governments do and they hide people. So that's what I'm seeing about this individual right now that I, I do believe it was a very real thing that happened. Um, and this is what he's experiencing. And now he's very much out of public view because the governments know that psychic abilities are very, very real. Uh, psychic attacks are very, very real. So they've hidden him in more than one way. They've hidden him in the 3D and they've also hidden him in other dimensions as well. Yes. Yeah. So that's a, a gift that we have, Cindy, to see all this. But the, the reality is that Cindy 
is not the only person that can do this. And we've, we've encountered many people that have gifts that are pretty similar. Um, I just wanted to share, too, uh, one of our, our family members, uh, Dwayne, just uh, sent an email, and I just wanted to read it to you guys. He said, I want to thank both uh, Mike and Cindy for the information about envisioning a green healing glow around our love, a four-year-old burn, burn doodle named Woodford. He was diagnosed late last year with renal disease. I put all my effort to his body to heal it with the green glow in my mind. Granted, we put him on renal prescription food only because I still have to research how to find it, how to make it myself. However, after the suggestion, his renal values went back to completely normal. Thank you guys for what you do for mankind and animal kind, Dwayne and Shannon. So that's beautiful. And Dwayne did it himself. Him and Shannon did it. And, you know, Cindy and I have helped thousands of people with energy work. And literally, I've worked on Cindy when I, one of the first times I worked on her, she had a growth in her ear and it dissolved working on it distance wise. And that was verified by a doctor. And then when I was with her personally in, in Nevada, another growth came back and uh, we dissolved that one. We, we literally saw a local doctor on a, like a Monday, made an appointment in Vegas, went on Thursday. And meanwhile, Tuesday and Wednesday, I worked on her energy wise. The doctor examined wasn't there. And, and this is what we do. This is what we practice. I could say, you could say we're energetic athletes <laughs> because we work on ourselves a lot and we work on ourselves so that we can work on and help other people. But really what was going on with me is I, I had these, these tumors and I've already had two surgeries and, um, it was horrible. I mean, before I met Mike, my whole face, the side of my face went paralyzed. I had the tumors, I had surgeries and they also had to do bone graphing because the tumors encroached so far. They actually had to take out part of my skull. It, it was really bad. It was really bad. I, I didn't know of any alternative healing at the time. So when the doctors tell me, that um, you have another tumor, uh, or, or there's no other option but surgery, I'm going to freak out because that's probably one of the most painful surgeries anybody could have, uh, at least it was for me. I mean, it was awful. And then to have Mike come along and dissolve the darn thing when the doctors are telling me you can only do surgery, this is the only way. Not just once, but twice. And um you know, documented too. And, and, and it's not just me. So many other people we have worked on where they have documentation. One day uh, something is broken. A few days later, they go to talk surgery and x-rays. Well, it's solved. Now we do have a, a part to take upon ourselves when it comes to getting ourselves in alignment uh, as far as diet, um, taking care of your temple. I mean, people have to do work but the energy work definitely gives you a boost and there are miracles. Sometimes just freakishly amazing things happen and and it's it's hard to say why, but they do. And this is what we do. We do the mantras, the meditation, we eat very clean. Um, we work on our energy bodies because sometimes people really need us. They have some serious problems and in this way, we're able to help them. Yeah, I mean, we've witnessed uh, so many, quote unquote, miracles, we, we can't keep track of them. Because this is the time of miracles, this is the changing of the age. This is what humans are capable of. So again, it's the dogma that, that is what's keeping us in darkness. Dogma is, is simply utilizing humanity's gullibility to keep them in a very, very controlled mindset and when you look at the chakras you, you recognize the symbol you know this this is what we've seen with uh, the, the medical symbol you get your wings so to speak and this is actually um, you know again a representation that's been in many people's subconscious and they don't understand what it is but you'll see it it's all over the Vatican it's all over the medical system it's everywhere uh, you get your wings, so to speak, when your energy is balanced and your chakras 
are flowing. Now, you actually have thousands of chakras, but there are seven that are thought to be the major ones along the sp spinal column. Each one of them deals with a certain energy and is blocked by a certain energy. The root chakra is blocked by fear. So when people say, uh, you know, the beginning of all wisdom is, is the fear of God, or the fear of God is the beginning of all, nope, couldn't be anything farther from the truth. That is the biggest lie that anybody could ever sell you. And because, again, ultimately, what is God? God is ultimately love. The source of all things is, is nothing but the purest love possible. And when we're in the Kali Yuga in a 3D existence, you're very far away from that energy. And it would be overwhelming for us and uh, to experience that. And it can be overwhelming. But it can also bring about amazing uh, cures and miracles. So it's blocked by fear. Your root chakra is blocked by fear. So they keep us in nonstop war to lock down the chakras. These chakras are interdimensional vortices. They're gateways to consciousness, to, to higher densities. As we get rooted, you know, the energy has a chance to flow. Now, the second chakra, it's blocked by guilt. Well, hey, original sin. What does that do? It causes guilt. Absolutely. Everything about their dogma is all about blocking the flow of energy. That's why it's there. It's all about blocking your energy flow so you can never rise up, so you can never literally get your wings. And then, you know, the solar plexus chakra blocked by shame, you know, repent, repent. I mean, you, you can't make this up. This is what the system does. And, you know, you're not going to have uh, an enlightened crown chakra when these lower ones are blocked. It stops the energy flow. When you look to the statue of Baphomet, they stop the Ida and Pingala at the solar plexus. And we brought this up many times because it shows you that this is a perversion. This is a distortion. This means that the upper chakras are disconnected from the lowers. This means that your higher self is disconnected from your lower self, which ultimately means you're not connected to source. You're connected to the system. Everything is an inversion. Spirit is at the bottom point, and the physical reality is raised above it. It shows, you know, this is all about the here and now and controlling this world. And I made that comment saying that that's what the Torah is about. The Torah is not about the afterlife. And if you look to scholars, they'll tell you, yeah, it's really not about the afterlife. It's, it, it's about one tribe's relationship with their patron, deity. Well, they're mighty one. That's, that's you know, a big, big reveal. There's all sorts of symbolism here. There's all sorts of symbolism here. And, and Yeshua's mission was not a blood sacrifice. And it wasn't about inducing guilt. It was about talking about human potential and where we can go and what we can do. Mm -hmm. Look at that dollar sign there. <laughs> that's a good one. Right yes, there. it's all symbolism. And it's really not very nice. And a lot of people are having an incredibly difficult time right now because their energy bodies are really getting turned on and there's really no stopping it. Uh, energy work is something that can help and help you work through the traumas and give you some understanding as far as what's going on. But they don't, they don't teach this stuff anywhere. This information as far as the energy body and how to work with it and how to ease into this new world, this new understanding, this awakening that you're going through, being it is seriously like being reborn when when you go through an activation or an awakening. It's it's really not very it's not understood. But like I said, the system's aware of that. That's why they throw all the nasty food. That's why they throw all the poison. They throw all these poisonous darts at us one after the next after the next in hopes that that flower might not bloom. Isn't that sad? That is so sad. But could you imagine if everyone were able to bloom and then the whole world would be full of this beautiful scent that <laughs> they just couldn't stand and they'd have to leave? But uh, we're going through some challenges now and just do your best. Do your best. Be the best version of you that you can possibly be and heal yourself. Heal, heal, heal. Absolutely. 
So may this world be freed from the dark system and may the true creator of this world be known in everybody's heart. And we will manifest miracles because it, it's just part of being human. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.